the sneaky Chanel price increase that just happened. You guys were also very curious about my Hermes journey. A ton of questions this time and we're gonna get working on them very soon. But before, I wanna thank today's video sponsor, Ana Luisa. I'm really feeling the denim look and I just wanted to put my hair up and just have a simple look, jazz it up with jewelry today. On my ears, I have these beautiful statement huggies. I like that they're chunkier, but they are still fine jewelry. They're made with recycled sterling silver and plated in gold and that's what i love about Ana luisa they are a sustainable company all their packaging is uh minimal but effective i love 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 these pouches i'm sure you guys have heard me talk about them many many times so i have these beautiful new earrings they are the kion earrings and they are absolutely stunning i highly recommend these i love how chunky they are like i said i also have this really cool i think you call this a snake chain or something i just love that it's so simple and that you could just wear it alone or layer it underneath today i just felt like i wanted a bit of bling but not too much it's really shiny and really really smooth it doesn't actually pull your hair which a lot of the snake chains do again this one is also in their fine jewelry line which is all sterling silver recycled sterling silver plated with gold. On my hands, of course, I have my own jewelry, but I also stack this beautiful sterling silver ring that is gold plated with a few crystals here on the crisscross in the front. And this is how the back looks like. So these are my own jewelry and I just wore this in the center and I just think that it looks gorgeous with my Justin Clou thin ring as well as my Hermes Kelly ring. This is the size small by the way some of you were wondering if I got the extra small or the small and I got the small because uh, these ones have diamonds. My own bracelet, some of you didn't know what bracelet this was but I thought it was popular enough. This is the small love bracelet. I have it in the 15 centimeter. I went with their chain bracelet on this arm. This one is not part of their fine jewelry but it is still gold plated. I just love the little stone detail which kind of adds a little bling to this arm and i think it works with this whole uh very casual denim look which uh, i guess i'm going for today uh, i just love these pieces of dainty jewelry that can still kind of be edgy i'll have all of these pieces linked down below in the description box if you're interested definitely check them out i also have a coupon code you can use at checkout to save 10%. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this part of the video. First question by CK Tour. Chanel price increase? Yes, there was a very sneaky Chanel price increase that happened on a lot of the very popular pieces. I found this post on Miss Benja Ree, so I'm just gonna put it here on the screen. And her post was great because she even calculated or is showing the percentage of increase. Belt bag that I bought just this past season, 21B. Well, this one went up in price as well by 5.4% apparently. So it was about a, actually I think in Canada, it went up by $100, which is kind of crazy. And then um, the little vanity cases are going up in prices or have gone up in prices. Those ones have gone up quite a bit. This is the vanity case that I bought from the 21A collection. So it's literally uh, like three months ago. And this one is going up in prices as well. The smaller version of this, which is half the size of this, has gone up by 30%, which is insane, guys. I did say in my review that this was super well priced when I got it, which is why I jumped on it the moment that um, it, it came out. And I was such a fan of the uh, top handle that was basically the whole reason why I got this version because I really like the top handle It really does look like a proper handbag, but now they are pretty much increasing it to a proper handbag price which uh, Would make sense for this one, I guess but for the small size For the tiny little one that's half the size It's still not a proper handbag. So the phone cases this white one with the little zip around is going up by 41%. Oh my gosh. I have to admit that even I'm like a bit, <laughs> you know, because usually I'm like, oh, you know, it is what it is. It's Chanel, blah, blah, blah. It always will happen. But it just seemed like the last one happened not too long ago and it's happening again, even though it's just on select items. Uh, I guess we don't even know what's the full range of the things that will go up in price. Anyway, it, it's, um, it sucks. I, I, 
I'm with you. Next question is by Beth Luxuries. Would you consider a Chanel walk? I'm not in the market for one at the moment, but I won't say no forever because uh, walks, especially wallet on chains, have become even more relevant. I'm really into the micro bags at the moment, and I know it's a trend, but I do uh, work really well with these size bags, and they are great when we are allowed to go travel again. However, wallets on chains are kind of the step up of that, right? Because you can fit your phone, you can fit your sanitizer, you can fit so much more, and it's still thin and still sticks close to your body which i really really like and appreciate now before i always used to say no i'll never buy a walk it is one of those things that changes with time and i will not say that i won't buy one in the future because it's possible that it will eventually one day but just not right now i don't need one right now right now even with phones you can buy the ones with the cords attached to it and where your micro bags and you can get out of the door so uh, this one i got it from i actually just bought it from shein and it's actually really really good quality so if you guys want to check out this one i'll link it down below boogly blues uh hi amy absolutely love your videos would love to know what do you think about the vintage classic flaps it depends on the condition of the vintage flap because i have seen a video of someone who collects just vintage flaps mostly and uh, some of her bags dates back to prior to 1986 where uh, there were not even any serial code or authenticity cards back then the very first Chanel flaps that came out didn't have any of those things she mainly finds the ones that are pristine almost unused or just very very carefully used even though it's that old they are absolutely stunning so I feel like for me, if I were to go to vintage route, I would have to find pieces that have hardly any wear and tear. So uh, the hardware has to be super shiny. The leather has to have no creases or very, very minimal damage. Uh, basically, wear and tear has to be so minimal uh, and no smell, nothing like that, that will bother me. I don't like the feeling that I am using a bag that I don't own. Like. I mean, I might own it legitimately because I bought it, but I just feel like it's not its not how I, I would have treated it. So if it had any perfume smell or cigarette smell, that is definitely a complete no-no. But if it has the sort of wear and tear that I normally would not put into my bags, that also is a complete no-no because I just feel like, ugh, that's just not me. That's not how I like my bags to look like and that's not how I would have treated my bag. So unless it's a completely pristine, like 99% pristine vintage bag, I would say I will pass. Um, but I do agree that if you can find one in a really, really good condition, then vintage bags, and I hear from everybody, like everybody in the, <laughs> in the community of luxury, uh, that vintage lambskin is so much better, and I have yet to see one still, but I, I will be open to one if it's, um, if it's authentic and if it's pristine, basically. So I'm not against it. Until I find one like this, I'm just going to stick to my brand new retail bags because... Um, the availability here is just not that great for the requirement that I want, you know? Next question by Kimberly07. It is rare for Chanel to repeat seasonal colors. I want the 21A gray classic flap, but it's so much money. And yes, I agree. I feel like with grays especially, even though they may not be exactly like exactly the same shade of gray, it can still be similar. I have seen Chanel do a lot of light gray in the past. So don't get discouraged yet. It just might not be caviar. It could be lambskin. It could be a different type of caviar. It can be more shiny. It can be more matte. It can be softer, etc, etc. Sakura KL. Hi, Amy. Can you share tips on how to wear brooches but not destroying the garments? Depending on the size of your brooch, your pin can be uh, a lot thicker and longer. And also the size of the brooch will determine the weight of the brooch. So as you can see, this one will be a lot more heavy and the pin will be thicker as well. Therefore, it will make a bigger hole on your fabric. And it is inevitable if you are working with lightweight fabric such as I would say silk, uh, any satins or any sort of fabric that just seems like it's easy to make a hole and it doesn't go back to its normal form, uh, I would just avoid it, especially if your brooch has some weight, like a larger one. 
it will definitely with gravity and everything it will pull it down the hole will go, become bigger and especially if your fabric is not tightly woven or if it's a very very soft uh, very very light fabric then um, it's just physics it's just impossible to use it on such fabric basically uh, unless you have a very very light very small pin um, then maybe you can get away with it but I would just refrain from doing it just in case you damage it uh, you could always try it on like a very inconspicuous area so like maybe find the bottom of the garment just underneath uh, on the underside try it and see if it leaves any marks like any holes that doesn't go back to its original state it really depends on the fabric so it's not really a trick trick but you might be able to get away with a tiny tiny brooch that weighs uh, very little but otherwise there isn't going to be really a real trick it really just depends on your fabric and how strong it is jlep1215 sometimes i have imposter syndrome wearing my chanel's i have paid for myself anyone else i feel like i have had those feelings the more you expose yourself to that outside comfort zone the more you get used to it so it's just one of those things you just have to do it no one can tell you how to do it. You just have to do it. And the more you are getting used to it, the, the better you get at it. I'm sure if you follow my channel and you religiously watch all my videos, you would have heard that my first Chanel bag I actually bought in 2010. It was a Chanel reissue, medium size. I bought it without even knowing that if that was the bag that I really liked and that if I, uh, or actually I should say that if it was a bag that really suited my lifestyle because I did like it but I just didn't know if it suited my lifestyle and I obviously didn't because I sold it very very quickly right after that and made a loss which oh my gosh what <laughs> at the time I just felt that imposter syndrome I guess you you could call it but it's one of those things where I'm like I'm so afraid to use such an expensive bag and I just I just didn't even know why I spent that much money. I just couldn't believe that I spent that much money even though at the time that was just the money that you could get maybe in SLGs nowadays. So it's just crazy how it is. Uh, but you just get used to it. Nowadays the bags are double, triple the price, especially classic flops. And I'm used to it now. I mean, I don't want to say that I'm like completely 100% comfortable every single time I wear my bags because it still depends on where I go, the people that I am gonna be, you know, interacting with that day. But in general, I'm okay with it. That doesn't actually just come with using your handbags. It comes with everything else surrounding your life, like every aspect of your life. And just as a person yourself, just becoming more of knowing who you are and understanding your own self-confidence uh, awareness uh, it comes with all of that it's not just because of using your bags more but it it just is a part of your growing Chris Tan hello babe she's one of our members uh, you have your weekly live streams with Kat as well as your weekly videos as well as your uh, regular job how do you manage your time I know it sounds like it's very straightforward but it really is because the live streaming as well as the weekly uploads it becomes a part of my integral schedule think of someone who is self-employed because they are always working they don't just have nine to five and then the rest of the time they are free it's not like that it's anytime you have free time you are working as long as that thing that you do is valuable to you whether it's uh, you know getting your daily walk uh, brushing your teeth you know washing your hair those things you have to do right all the time it's just you just allocate time to do it it, it becomes part of your routine so um, yeah it you just do it I guess you just <laughs> but thank you for the question hi Hiyoni uh, may I ask why you sold your Fendi bags? You looked great with them. I did. I um, I did. I did a lot of, uh, I don't know what you call it, like uh, spring cleaning, calling, whatever you want to call it. I am after my very first uh, Holy Grail uh, bag from Hermes because I knew that there were a certain process that you had to follow mainly to do pre-spending and then of course you also need the money to buy the bag so i have 
definitely downsized my collection uh, quite a bit. I basically decided that I still wanted the bulk of my Chanel bags. I definitely associate my style and my preference to Chanel more. So I try not to move my Chanel collection as much. So what else is left really? Everything else is left, right? That's the reason. There's really not a super a uh, hardcore reason it's just that i have to cut somewhere and you have to choose right and i'm not ready to let my chanel collection go not entirely i mean eventually i will probably have to downsize even further as i get into this journey even more it's going to come down to how am i going to be able to uh, recycle what i already own and make it uh, more sustainable for myself. Lin Tren 411 do you think the trendy CC is still worth buying? Absolutely, I feel like uh, of all my Chanel bags, the trendy CC is one of the more special ones. It does have a pretty high price tag, but it's one of those bags where it's the more different ones than your classic flops. And I love that trendy bar. It's just so special to me. I feel like a million bucks when I wear it. I do tend to wear that bag when I am wearing more substantial outfits. If I'm wearing a blazer or if I'm wearing a larger coat, then it really goes well together. It's not going to be a bag that I will probably buy if I was working on my first or second bag, for example. But at one point, you're going to feel like you've had enough of everything else. So for me, for example, I've had enough of the minis and the Cocos and the Gabrielles. I wanted something so different and that I've never experienced before, which is mostly lambskin. I was ready for it when I bought mine, so I absolutely think that it's still worth it. Price increases will always happen. If you know you're gonna like a style, just buy it. If you know that you already have been saving for it and that you like that bag, just buy it because you're almost guaranteed that it will just increase in price anyway. So, um, Get it when you can, when you're ready. Also from Lin Tran 411 Chanel is releasing the 21K collection in a couple weeks. Are you eyeing anything? I am um, not so much in the bag departments, but I still really like their small leather goods. So yeah, basically more micro bags. And because micro bags is such a, tr is such a trend right now, it is really the time to get into it because it's available now and I feel like I might just need another one to kind of round off this small and growing collection of micro bags that I own. Aside from that, I'm not really eyeing anything else. I'm not eyeing handbags per se and uh, I might go for more of like accessories instead, which I have been doing a lot lately. I'm definitely buying more of the accessories. It's less about the bags, more about the accessories, more about everything else that complements your outfit. Katie Chi, does your hubby also like Lux? Yes, he does. Um, but we love luxury in different departments. So obviously for me, it's uh, clothes and bags. For him, it's more about uh, shoes, sneakers especially, uh, watches, uh, golfing, that's a luxury, right? So those are the things that he's more into, whereas I'm into, you know, dressing up and <laughs> my handbags. Uh, so yeah, he is. Also from Katie, what industry are you in for work? I mentioned this before for sure already, so I'm guessing you are maybe newer to my channel. Um, but I am um, an IT professional. IT comprises a lot of different jobs. You can be an analyst, you can be quality assurance, you can be a project manager, you can be an engineer, you can be a software. I guess that's why IT was such a big field to get into at the time because every single aspect of your life, like every industry needs IT. Fergie Chen, have you tried the Chanel and Moa program? Uh, so as far as I know, this is just their uh, I guess their upgraded warranty program or like after service, which no, I have not. You guys know already that I buy all my bags brand new and I have never had any issues in terms of wear and tear enough to actually go and have something repaired. Um, so no, I have not. Just in case you don't know what it is, I'm gonna put a screen grab of what the Chanel et Moi program is. It's basically all their new bags now have a warranty of five years. Next question, if you didn't have a YouTube channel, do you think you would 
still buy as many bags. Not just being on YouTube, actually just consuming content, like consuming online content really does influence you in many more ways than you think. Subconsciously, it does. So uh, of course, because I make the content myself, I am even more influenced because I'm influenced by just doing the research and also with my friends, uh, you know, YouTube friends, uh, subbies, everyone, <laughs> we influence each other, right? Like you, you guys influence me, I influence you back. I definitely will say that yes, but not because I'm a YouTuber necessarily. I feel like if I'm already consuming YouTube, that alone will uh, make me buy more than if I didn't consume any. So definitely yes. T Cabez129, would you go over the one to one ratio to get your Birkin? <laughs> yes, because I'm already over it. A lot of the success stories where they don't have to spend that much to get their bags, those individuals were just very, very lucky because this is definitely not the norm. As far as I know, unless you live in a European city and if you travel a lot, especially within Europe where you get access to more different stores, and maybe also from your own connections uh, and just being savvy about it, unless you have that kind of access, um, you have no choice but to do the process, the more standard process, which is to do the pre-spend, which is to be a loyal client for a long time. And because Vancouver only has one store, you have no other choice but to work with that one store and with the essay that you have. So that is pretty much a given spending one-to-one -one in these scenarios which is more standard is the minimum <laughs> i know there could still be exceptions i'm not saying that ex exceptions don't happen but they are exceptions so i have already gone way past that um it is a waiting game at this point i feel of course i will still pop in and buy the, the thing here and there because i'm always eyeing something new but I know for a fact that the stock here in Canada is just not enough and therefore it's it's just it is what it is like I just have to do what I already am doing uh, and be patient for Canada in general uh, spending a ratio of two to one is not unusual it really isn't um, so I'm definitely already approaching that and it is what it is. Uh, what can I say? I, I can't change the fact that there's only one Hermes in my city and that there's no sock. <laughs> not enough for the demand anyway, not enough supply for the demand. Emily Chang, what do you think of the YSL Solferino? This is the medium size. I like it. Um, I guess I'm just not the biggest sort of uh, buyer. Like I appreciate everything. Like you guys already know I do the luxury live show with Kat. We talk about all the brands, but you guys already know our favorites. And I definitely don't really buy any other brands, especially if I'm trying to really limit my collection to a minimum. Uh, so I, I will never say bad things about another bag. I will still critique it in a objective way as if like you ask my opinion as a friend. So I like it, it's cute. You get a lot of bag for the price because 3,725, that's a price of an SLG, like a tiny little SLG at Chanel. It looks really, really nice and well-made and just a classic silhouette. YSL is one of the more well-priced luxury brand out there that still looks so amazing and well-made. Don't let our opinions, just because we're online and because we give our opinions, uh, because you guys asked for it, uh, don't let it deter you. Just because we don't buy it doesn't mean that it's bad, right? Uh, just keep that in mind always. If you're brand new to my channel, also don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you back and give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.